Hello and welcome to the next episode in the FPV University series. Today we will take a look at how the Betaflight PID controller works. We're gonna take a deep dive into the mechanics that are behind the Betaflight's PID controller because understanding is the key to mastering. So be prepared to learn something new today. Let's go! A quick note, to keep this video relatively short and entertaining, I allowed myself to simplify a few aspects of the Betaflight's PID controller. Today we are going to completely ignore the thrust pit attenuation, crash recovery, launch control, acro trainer and integrated yaw. Also for the sake of the simplicity, not every dependency and connection between the functionalities inside of the Betaflight PID controller will be really discussed. Betaflight just like every other flight controller have three basic PID controllers. They are called the RAID PID controllers and they are responsible for the stabilization of your drone. Three PID controllers because there's one for each axis. One for roll, one for pitch and one for yaw. Each of those flight controllers as the input takes the current rotation rate registered by the gyro and the current set point which is the Determined by your movement of the sticks on your radio or higher level functions. But as long as you fly in the acro mode, your input from the sticks is directly translated to the PID controller. And the output of each of those flight controller is then fed to the mixer and finally to the motors. As I just mentioned, there are two inputs for each of those PID controller. The set point, which is the desired rotation rate in degrees per second determined by the pilot movements and the filtered gyro signal also in the degrees per second. Then both set point and the gyro have four parallel swim lanes. One is for the P term, one for the I term, one for the feet forward and finally one for the D term. After computation in each of those swim lanes is completed, then the output of the PID controller is just a sum of those four values. The P term, the I term, fit forward, and the D term. Plus some extra operations like for example the acceleration limit on the set point and few of the additional elements we will not be discussing today like for example acro trainer integrated your launch control crash recovery or the TPA. One of the first operations in the PID controller is the acceleration limit. Due to inertia and in general physics, the drone cannot accelerate as fast as the sticks can be moved, especially when you are flying with high rates and high expo. This is why the desired set point rotation rate can be limited and Betaflight is capable of limiting the acceleration rate on your sticks. The next step is the error computation. Error, just like the name implies, is the difference between the desired state and the current state. And error is the main information fed both to the P-term swim lane and the I-term swim lane. Let's begin with the P-term, not only because it's critical and the first in the PID name, but also because it's probably the simplest of them all. The computed P-term, the proportional part of the PID controller, is nothing more than the error multiplied by the P-gain. Just like that. Compute the error, multiply it by the P gain, and you have the P term done. Betaflight P term processing has the additional low pass filter for the Yo. P term. This is basically to slightly smoothen out the P term computed for yo, because yo not only usually is the noisiest of the axes, but also works in a slightly different way. And how the motors are delivering the control on the yo axis means that usually the yo axis is not as responsive as others. Keep the noise down and basically keep the motor slightly 
colder. For beta flight, the last step in the P-term processing is to apply the anti-gravity boost. You know, the situation when you fly with the drone, then pull the throttle low and do not want your drone to wobble. The anti-gravity boost helps to keep drone stable even when you just rapidly pull the throttle low and the motors are not capable of delivering enough of the torque to keep the drone stable using standard gains on P, I and D. The I term is slightly more complicated than the P term because we have additional steps and slightly more math involved. The first element is the I term relax. I term relax is the functionality that allows to lower and ultimately remove the bounce back at the end of rapid maneuvers. It basically observes how fast you are moving the sticks on on your radio and scales down the item response the faster you move the sticks. So the item can be fully active when you are just flying straight and do not request something that might lead to the bounce back and then actively reduces the item when the bounce back can occur. This is especially visible with the flips and the rolls. Without the item relax, your drone at the end of the rapid maneuver would slightly overshoot and then go back all because the item was allowed to grow too much. With the active item relax, this is basically no longer happening. This video was created thanks to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you guys and girls, your constant support is the main reason this channel keeps going. If you're not one of them, then please consider becoming one for as little as two bucks a month. All the required links and buttons are just below the video. The next element in the item processing is the absolute control. Bear in mind, absolute control is disabled by default. This is why we will only mention today that yes, it exists, it has the capability to override to some extent the pilot inputs to keep the best possible locked in feeling of your drone, especially in the line of sight flight. But because it's disabled by default, we will not go any deeper into this topic today. The next element is one more time anti-gravity. Just like the P-term can be boosted when you pull the throttle low, the same situation is happening for the item. When you pull the throttle low and the anti-gravity is enabled, then the Betaflight PID controller has the option, has the possibility to temporarily boost the item response. So that when you pull the throttle low, the drone is still stable, locked in and does not wobble. And only then, finally, the item itself is computed. The item is basically the accumulator of all the errors in the past. The bigger and the longer lasting error, then the item response will be bigger. If there is no error or error in time cancels each other, then the item is kept at zero or at least very low. The third swim lane is the fit forward swim lane. In this swim lane, Betaflight PID controller basically computes how rapidly it should help the motors based only on your stick movement. The feet forward ignores the current gyro rate and works only with the desired set point determined of course by you as a pilot. The first element is the computation of the set point acceleration. Betaflight includes quite a complex logic that computes the set point acceleration, how fast the set point is changing over time. And there are a couple of separate fit forward functions that are used to finally determine the set point accelerations. Those are fit forward transition, fit forward smoothing, fit forward jitter prevention, and the fit forward 
boost. Only after those functions are applied to the current and the past set point value, the beta flight is able to compute the feed forward term, which basically is just previously computed set points acceleration multiplied by the feed forward gain. Think of it like of the Peter, but instead of the error, we work only with the difference in the set point. A control derivative, you might say. And finally, to smoothen the response, the feed forward component is filtered through the low pass filter. And finally, probably the most complicated, D term component. A little counterintuitively, the D-term component computation begins with applying extra filters on the gyro signal. Why the filter gyro signal is usually enough for the P-term and the I-term, it's usually too noisy for the D-term itself. Because the D-term works with the acceleration of the gyro signal, any kind of the noise present in the incoming signal will be then amplified and fed to the motor. This is why a very strict filtering is basically required to have relatively noise free D-term component. Noise-free gyro signal for the D-term component is ensured thanks to three filters. D-term notch, by the way, this one is disabled by default and I don't think that nobody ever uses that. Next is the D-term low-pass filter one, which can be either dynamic or static. When it's static, then it's just a static cutoff frequency applied all the time. When it's dynamic, the cutoff frequency depends on the current throttle position. So when the motors are rotating faster and generate the higher frequency noise, we might just increase the cutoff frequency and lower the phase delay. Then there is a second D-term LPF, this time static, and only then the gyro acceleration is computed. The gyro acceleration is actually a pretty simple thing to compute, assuming of course that your signal is noise Free. It's just current value minus previous value. And that's all. The D term works only with that. Because the difference between the current and the previous is called the derivative. Then the beta flight computes the D term itself, which is basically the acceleration times the D gain and time normalization, etc., etc., etc. But basically, it's just the acceleration on the gyro signal times the D gain. And finally, beta flight applies the de min functionality. De min is the dynamic gain of the D term component. Because usually when you are flying straight, then your drone does not need a lot of the D term. You're flying straight, nothing really fancy is going on, and keeping the D term low might help to attenuate some of the noise that it might be feeding to the motor. Motors. When you are doing a fast and rapid flippity floppy, you need as much of the D term as you can get. The D mean is able to detect in which of those two states the drone is currently in and adjust the scaling of the previously computed D term to best match the requirements. The more rapid flying style, the more D term is applied. And that's the beta flight P. ID controller, set point, gyro, output, and in between the proportional, integral, fit forward, and derivative components. Here's the next video you should watch. I'm Paweł Spychalski, thank you very much for watching, and like always, happy flying!